Hello and welcome to the video. This is a first look and some flight footage from this brand new camera from Cadix. Now, for those of you that have been watching the channel for a long time, you'll know that I am a fan of the DJI HD system. However, the Cadix Nano, which I've had a couple of here pre-installed in some of the small review quads, was one of the weakest cameras on the entire system. And I wasn't a fan, but I don't think I'm alone in that. I think lots of pilots tried it and found it severely lacking. Now, chip shortages since the start of COVID have meant that lots of other manufacturers have started to bring out cameras for the DJI system, which is great, but they are the larger size and typically using sensors that only allow you to have 169 aspect ratio, which for a quad, I prefer 4.3. I like 169 for planes. 4.3 for me just seems to keep the bandwidth all contained within the image that I want, and it makes the OSD easier to see because I can stack them up the sides. But this is the new Nebula Pro Nano. So what is it? And is it a viable option for those times when you need a tiny camera and you don't want to sacrifice the image quality or some of the features that you get in the Nebula Pro? Is it 4.3 and 16.9? Do you get full control again from within the goggles for your exposure and all those other pieces? So I've installed the nano camera from this particular kit into this little model here. This is the Cinelog 25. Uh, this is the model that I have put all of my cameras in for review. And the reason for that is that originally it got shipped with a Nebula Pro and that worked beautifully. But interestingly, a lot of the recent cameras that have been getting in, things like the Polar and others, have had jello issues on exactly the same mount. And and that has been also reported by other people as well. So with some of the newer cameras that have been coming out, you have to be a little bit careful about vibration on the model. So to install this into this little Cinelog, what I did was undid the two screws at the back of the camera and then removed the cable from the camera that was installed on the model. This is actually one of the Runcam DJI cameras that I've got in here at the moment. Now with the back removed from the Nebula Pro Nano, just the two screws, then it's the usual thing, gently prise out the cable, and the cable is exactly the same size as all of the other cameras that work with a DJI system. There's nothing specific. Word of warning, the back of this camera looks like it's plastic. It isn't. It feels like it's something else. It feels a little bit hard to be aluminium. It might be something a little bit more exotic, like a titanium or something like that. But when I tried to snip it so that I could get the cable free, it broke. So warning about that because the little slot here that the cable goes through, I didn't want to uh, manhandle the connection at the end. I thought just snipping that and pulling the cable out would be a better idea. I kind of regret that decision now. Push the cable into the position on the back of the camera and then popped the back on and mounted it as you would normally. Now, one of the things I noticed when I was playing with this is that the new Nebula Pro Nano, putting it by the side of the original Nebula Nano, you can see that it is a little bit deeper. It's two or three millimeters deeper than the original one. So if you have seen this and think you can do a direct swap for swap, just be aware of the slightly larger physical size. It isn't a lot, but it might make all the difference in a little quad where space is tight. So this is what it looks like installed. Again, this is in this quadcopter that has had vibration issues with other of the cameras. And I have had to use the spacer around it so that it fits in position because it's made for the regular size DJI cameras. So let me very quickly fire up the model and also fire up my goggles and let's have a very quick look, make sure that first of all, the camera is working before we go to the field. But more importantly, is it going to allow me to go into the menu for the camera settings and change things like the aspect ratio and other pieces? And the fantastic news is absolutely yes you can 69 and 43 is in here scene settings ev settings saturation white balance all the stuff that i expect to have on a full size nebula pro is in this nebula pro nano really really happy to see that i've missed that on lots of recent cameras that have been coming out 
So in terms of the flying footage, now this was filmed uh, during a wintry morning here in the UK, a little bit of wind. The sun is quite low in the sky, but behind the clouds. And it's that kind of weird situation where the sky is actually quite bright and the ground isn't really well illuminated. So I'm having to fly around here. Um, I'm flying in 4.3. The EV is set to minus one on this, just like you've just seen. Haven't changed any of the scene settings or anything. This is literally the first flight on the camera. Colour reproduction is good. It's a little bit washed out. Uh, dynamic range is okay. I, again, would increase the exposure just a smidge. I would up it a little bit to zero. Uh, it feels a little bit dark in places. But the really cool thing that is being, jumping out at me with this is there is no jello that I can detect on the image. Just like the full-size Nebula Pro, this Nebula Pro Nano is performing beautifully and this is the only other camera apart from the nebula pro that has been happy on this model in this position and hasn't given me a little bit of jello does seem a little less sharp the image than the full size nebula pro maybe that's the lens array uh, but this is a lovely image from such a small compact camera and as somebody who is absolutely not a fan of the normal nebula nano the nebula pro nano is light years ahead of the old one so in summary as i am recording this i don't know the price i've only had it a couple of days and literally had time to pop it into the model and have a flight or two and the smaller lens will mean that there's less light getting into the sensor so you may need to spend a little bit more time tweaking things like the exposure to get the kind of image that you want now this is a smaller camera for the DJI system that I will be happy to use for those models that need a super small camera in the 3 gram range and that smaller compact size. Be aware again that it is a couple of millimeters taller than the original Nebula Nano but I would be quite happy to accommodate that slightly larger size for the huge improvement in the image quality. Will I choose this over the full-size Nebula Pro when I can get one? No, but for those instances where a model will only fit a nano-sized camera, the Nebula Pro Nano is absolutely the camera that I'm going to use from now on. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.